Welcome back to The Net. I am Kenya Tapia. This week, we find out your phobias, learn where our star athletes are going to college, and Hoover students are honored for their hard work. But first, Frankie Trejo reports on Hoover's new schedule for next year. Starting fall 2015, students at Hoover will be attending school with an old 4x4 schedule in order to experience longer classes and get credits faster. Well, as I understand it, we're going to a uh, block uh, schedule next year. So instead of six classes like we have now, we're going to go uh, to just four classes per day, and each class will be approximately 90 minutes long. So uh, I think it uh, gives students an opportunity to uh, focus a little bit more in depth on some of their classes and not move at such a fast pace, so I think it'll be uh, worthwhile. The new 4x4 schedule, uh, I'm excited about. I think it's going to be a positive thing for the school. Um, yeah, I totally voted for it because I've taught here before at Hoover. Uh, my first year teaching here, I've taught it. We did the 4x4 probably at least six of my years, and I totally thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, you know, you have longer, uh, longer time with the kids. Uh, I do a lot of project-based learning, so I, you have more time to set up, to clean up, to get stuff out, to kind of switch gears, to do a lot of things in one period. It's less of a rush. The reason for the schedule change was uh, to give uh, students more time to complete their college, I mean, excuse me, their high school graduation credits. Uh, right now, there's a certain number of credits required for graduation, and if you fail more than one or two courses, uh, it's tough to graduate on time unless you go to summer school or night school. And a lot of those programs are being cut out due to the budget cuts. And so this gives students more opportunities during the normal school day to get uh, things done. In my opinion, the schedule change is good because many students will catch up on their credits and others will graduate early. I feel like it's unnecessary for the changes to happen because I already have all my credits. But in a way, I feel like it can help other students that are failing their classes. I just like it because the classes are going to be more longer and I'm going to be sitting on the same spot for a while. I'm going to get bored and tired. I don't feel like we need a schedule change. I think the schedule is fine the way it is. The new schedule will have students in their classroom for an hour and a half. There will be four classes per semester. Therefore, students will have more time to complete their assignments instead of rushing their lessons. In addition to that, students will have a total of eight classes per school year. The 4x4 has the support of teachers, counselors, and Principal Austin. Supporting Principal Austin is Mrs. Hilda Hernandez. Mrs. Hernandez represented Hoover at the school district's annual Classified Employee of the Year ceremony, held at Ibarra Elementary. Classified employees make the school run, helping teachers and administration. Hoover staff voted Mrs. Hernandez their Classified Employee of the Year for all her hard work as an administrative assistant to Principal Austin and the entire Hoover staff. It's an honor for me to be here tonight. My school selected me to represent my classified staff from Hoover High School. We are uh, front line and the counter to support the parents in any way we, um, we can. We're there to support uh, our parents and to serve our students. Staying with the awards, the AOIT held their end of the year award ceremony this past week. Roberto Sandoval reports. This past Monday, the AOIT seniors received their AOIT stools and 10 of them received scholarships from the AOIT advisory board team. They were first fed hamburgers and hot dogs and got a ticket for the raffles that were held later on the afternoon for AOIT students and their families. Finally, the ceremony started and the AOIT director, Ms. Hummel, led the ceremony by introducing AOIT and the accomplishments that 9th to 12th grade students did this year. The moment that everyone has been waiting for is to see that Hoover's Nest crew received their AOIT stool that they can wear with with their red gown at graduation. Way to go, AOIT seniors! Also, this week, the art, literature, and media arts of Alma Academy hosted their annual ceremony in the auditorium, highlighting the accomplishments of Alma seniors. After the ceremony, Alma students performed live on stage and enjoyed foods and drinks. Going on at the same time at Liberty Station in Point Loma, Sabe and AOIT students presented their project-based learning presentation at the CCTE showcase in front of judges. The Sabe Academy showcased fine woodworking pieces, including handmade guitars, and displayed sheds built by Hoover students. This, this is the academy uh, following more uh, before your process of high school. 
teaching you step by step more about the, the life lessons of, of engineering and technology. Like freshman year, we took a workshop class which teaches you how to make stuff like tables, benches. Then sophomore year, we take a green tech class which teaches you more about green technology. Junior year, we make stuff like the guitars right there. That's mine, the one on the stand. It's uh, more fine woodworking. Then uh, our senior year, which if I don't know you guys noticed outside, there's a tool shed that we build uh, during our senior year. And yeah, that's what that's about. That's all it. From the AOIT, Mr. Boltner's GIS students presented their research related to food justice and safety in the community. The highlight of the evening was Mr. Kaplan's students presenting their work on the Hoover Aquaponics Lab. These Hoover students took third place in the competition. Showing people aquaponics and how it's a better way to grow fish and it saves less water since right now we're in a water crisis. Basically it's a way with, to grow uh, vegetables and fish using only about one-tenth the water of conventional farming. When we return, more from the nest. Stay tuned. Do you know how important water is? We use water every day, almost unconsciously. But do we truly realize how important water is? People have been concerned about water issues, especially in places like California. If people are concerned now, what will kids now think of the future? If this question bothers you, the next question you should ask yourself is, what can I do to stop this from happening? There are actually a lot of ways to prevent this from happening. For example, turning off water when brushing teeth, washing hands, or dishes. Putting your name on a cup and refilling that same cup throughout the day to prevent dishes from piling up. Consider buying a dual flush toilet. Instead of a regular toilet lever, it has two buttons, one for easy flushing and one for tough flushing, to control the amount of water used. Timing your showers. When waiting for hot water, put a container under and use the water for something else. Do you know how important water is? I'm Jesus Lopez and this is Hoover Sports. This week we bring you varsity baseball highlights and a little special segment on our Hoover student athletes committing to their colleges. The varsity baseball team faces Condito Charter this week for the last regular season game. The baseball team came out strong as they defeated Escondido Charter with a score of 9-4 and earning a four seed in the CIF playoffs for the second straight year. And now here's Daquan with our athletes. Have you ever wondered where the person next to you is going after high school? This class is known for making history. Now let's see where our fellow athletes are headed into their amazing futures. I committed to UCSD. I chose to go to UCSD because it has a good engineering program and because it's so close to the ocean. It's good for um, my major, which is environmental engineering, so I can get a better experience on how to keep the bay clean and um, lots of other environmental stuff that goes on. I'll be um, playing track and field and I'm going to trial for volleyball. I committed to Chico State. I committed to Chico State because I want to be in uh, either electrical or mechanical engineering and they have a good engineering program there at Chico State and also because they turn up a lot up there. I committed to Concordia University, Irvine. I received a cheer scholarship and also I'm majoring in communication and they have a really good communications program up there. I will be cheerleading. Um, I committed to Grand Canyon University. I'll be, I'll be wrestling. I, uh, 157-pound weight class. Um, I chose to go to Grand Canyon because uh, I felt like the coaches really cared about my life and my schooling, not just me as an athlete. Pacific Oregon University. I'll be playing football and running track because they have a good kinesiology program. The University of Laverne. I'm going to be playing football. I picked the school because it's a real nice small community where I think I can grow. Uh, the football team is uh they're doing uh they're doing all right right now uh they offer me some pretty good money and scholarships and they have a major that i really want to be in uh for biology and hopefully become a doctor someday that's it for sports be sure to go out and support your hoover cards it is great to see hoover athletes continue their amazing sports performances at the college level they are not afraid. Or maybe they are. In this week's QQ, we find out what Hoover students are afraid of. For this week's QQ, we're asking our fellow Cardinals, what are you most afraid of? Uh, I'm afraid of spiders. Um, my worst fear? 
is being alone. I'm afraid of a lot of things, like the dark. Afraid of rats. <coughs> Death because I would be hurt if one of my loved ones passes away. Um, I'm also afraid of failing because I don't like to disappoint people and I don't like the feeling you get when you know you lost. I'm most afraid of heights. What I'm afraid of is people stealing my money and not paying me back and I have to go find them. Clowns, have you seen the movie It? One thing I'm most afraid of is not succeeding in life. And living under a bridge like a homeless person because I don't want to do all that. Failure and losing myself. I'm scared of girls with no teeth and bad breath <laughs> because I think it is the worst. Scorpions. So uh, I'm mostly afraid of just not being the best, you know, always just being a loser. My mom, because she takes care of me and I'm um, pretty scary. Uh, my mom. I'm afraid of my mom. I'm scared of my mom. I'm uh, mostly afraid of like losing and stuff, you know. I want to be the best. Um, I'm scared of Mr. Shannix because he's the meanest teacher in the world. Not graduating from high school. I'm most afraid of all these seniors hunting me down to find out about their LOP hours. I have to admit, I'm afraid of elevators or any confined spaces. You know who's not afraid of small spaces? Mr. Andrews. Kian sits down on the red couch with the man who has traveled around the world on naval ships with living spaces that are really small. May 25th, this Monday, is Memorial Day, where we honor the soldiers, men and women who have lost their life in order to protect us and our country. Unfortunately, I cannot summon any of these men and women here to the show. Kin's here, and next to me is Mr. Andrews, uh, who served in the U.S. Navy, and before he decided to retire and came to Hoover High School to share his wisdom on the subject of physics. Mr. Andrew, welcome. Thank you, Keen. It's a pleasure to be here today it's at, uh, to at see your you. show. Yes, uh, how long have you been teaching at Hoover High School? Well, Keen, I retired from the Navy in 2003, and a few months after I retired, I became a student teacher at Hoover High School. And uh, at the end of my year of student teaching, I was asked to stay on, so I've been here ever since. So this is my 12th year here at Hoover. 12 years. Okay. Mr. Andrew, can you tell me what do you think is the most useless subject in high school? Um, you don't have to answer that okay. uh, for your own safety. Never mind. Uh, tell us your exciting adventures that you had back in the Navy. Well, I originally grew up on the East Coast and uh, went to college in uh, Florida, and I studied physics and oceanography down there. And so I always kind of liked uh, the sea and to travel. So when I graduated from college, I joined the Navy. And uh, I joined the Navy and had many, many assignments all around the world and uh, served on many different kinds of ships and uh, on shore duty stations around the world. But uh, it was a, a great, exciting life. I originally joined to, uh, to travel. I enjoyed traveling and seeing a lot of the world. But I found that uh, in the service, you really do a lot of other things as well. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I think I've had more than my fair share of being able to help out people in need, maybe to rescue people, those sorts of right. things like that, uh, which has been a very exciting part of being in the Navy. Nice. So what are some places you traveled to? Well, when I first joined the Navy, I, s I traveled mostly in the Mediterranean Sea. And so I visited Spain, Italy, uh, Turkey, Greece. I went to uh, Tunisia on the north coast of Africa. I went up to Scotland and England. And then other tours later in my career, I went over to the Pacific. Uh, I've been to Hawaii many times. Nice. I've been to uh, Hong Kong. I've been to Singapore. Uh, I actually lived in Japan for a year Ooh. near Tokyo when I was captain of a ship there. Uh. And uh, I've been to the Middle East many times. And in fact, I was even off the coast of uh, Somalia back, if you've ever heard the story of the Black Hawk Down when they had the helicopter was shot yes, down. Yes, yes, love that movie. So I was off the coast of uh, Somalia at that time and spent quite a bit of time in the, in the Middle East itself. Nice, you've been everywhere then, Ms. Andrews. Quite a bit of travel. Um, Ms. Andrew, um, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life, huh? Yeah, uh, never mind, I'll answer that too. 
Okay. Um, thank you for your hard work and dedication to everything. Um, please accept this gift that I have. Because normal calculator is too mainstream. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, being here with you today. And, you know, one of the, the reasons uh, I became a teacher was uh, on the, when I served on the Navy ships, you may not know this, but most of the sailors, I had men and women on my ship, but most of them were only about 19 or 20 years old, so they're yeah. just huh. out of high school. And I enjoyed working with them so much that when I retired, you know, I said I'd like to continue that. And okay. so I became a high school teacher where I get to kind of do the same kinds of things. You are amazing, Mr. Andrew. So, Mr. Vincent Andrew, everyone. <laughs> Kian, thank you for that interesting interview. I wonder what type of food he ate during his time at sea. He would have loved Paris Bakery. Here is the Hungry Bird Crew. No longer across from Hoover, Paris Bakery has moved locations and is now located in Far East Plaza, offering a variety of sandwiches, pastries, smoothies, and other goods. They are well known for their freshly baked sandwiches and pastries from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the weekdays. Paris Bakery only accepts cash and gets fairly crowded in the mornings before school. Overall, the sandwiches has a nice, soft, and crunchy texture, and the service is nice. We give Paris Bakery an 8 out of 10 Hungry Birds. Attention 9th, 10th, and 11th grade students. College Avenue Compact and Gear Up will be offering a free 4-week summer SAP prep program. In addition, snacks and materials will be provided. This program will begin on June 22 through July 17 from Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 1 through 5 p.m. here at Hoover. Reminder, pick up an application in the Counseling Center or Gear Up room in 206. The Hoover Wrestling Room will be open Tuesdays and Wednesdays after school for anyone who is interested in working out or is curious about participating in wrestling. Reminder, the wrestling room is inside the big gym. Yearbook distribution starts on May 26, but in order to receive it, you must clear your textbook fines as soon as possible. See Ms. Morham to get your clearance slip. On May 25th will be Memorial Day. Therefore, there will be no school on Monday. And that concludes this week's segment of the Cardinal Calendar. Enjoy your three-day weekend. That is it for this week. Enjoy your long weekend. See you back in school on Tuesday. <laughs>